The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 525, To the Sky. Bananas! Valet gave the suddenly brawling pirates a flat look. Seriously, what is it with you guys? I punch and kick you all I can, but the moment someone says Nightmare Module, that's what gets you? Maybe I should switch to that as my primary weapon instead. Nightmare Module! Nightmare Module! Nightmare! Her ears suddenly flicked as the residual chill from the nearby ice spikes gave way to a toasty warmth against her back. Uh-oh. Behind her, Bad Pony squabbled, a few sawing and hacking at the ice with whatever weapons they possessed to free their friends, but most trying to climb over their allies to charge towards Valet and the others. Only, they were running. Those who made it out ignored them completely, only to run into the brawl and freeze, screeching, looking for a way out. A red glow appeared distantly on the other side of the spikes, and that warmth tripled in intensity. Valet winced, already sweaty from the fight. It didn't take a genius to figure out who they were about to run into. <laughs> the ice spikes collapsed under a jet of boiling air, and most of the bat ponies collapsed in its wake, forming a limp pile three to four bodies high. Valet couldn't see past the pony wall, and she definitely couldn't fly. It was all she could manage to remain on her hooves, feeling her hairs curl from the heat. A wet heat full of moisture from the melted ice. She could barely breathe. The heat felled most of the fighting pirates in the other direction, and of her friends, only Shinespark and Puddles were left standing. Uh, Shinespark winced, Maine already matted. Hotter than the flame district at a bad day in here. Surrender, Meltdown's voice barked from down the corridor, far more distant than the heat felt like it was coming from. Your dying day doesn't have to be today, heretics. A few pirates also managed to stir. Puddles was hissing, covered in a layer of frost from the moisture as Meltdown's heat clashed with her magic. Valet gave her a desperate look. Puddles, break the ceiling! We'll have to make our way out of here! No, better way. Panting, Shinespark gripped Jarda's sword in her teeth and attacked the wall. Three giant slashes carving a triangular hole that she threw the weight of her armor into. With a crack, the wood broke free from its place and collapsed inward, leaving a hole for them to drag themselves through. Gasping, Valet pulled herself through, feeling a wave of relief at the cooler air that hit her face. A smelly air. She almost instantly choked at the overwhelming scent of sweat and unwashed manes, quickly recognizing the area as an empty bunk hall. Must have been where they stuffed everyone who didn't believe in bathing. Nevertheless, Valet took in as much relief as she could, helping Shinespark and Puddles' wonderfully cold body for the hole. The moment they were in, she jumped back, feeling herself instantly starting to heat again as she tried to fan Melia and Granada into wakefulness. Grape trees crawled along the ground, smart enough to drag herself towards safety. I got you! Shinespark's magic flared, lifting Granada and pulling her through. Just as the wind began to blow again with another wave of heat, Valet got Melia over her shoulders, the mare moaning weakly as their coats curled harder. What was Meltdown trying to do, light the pirates on fire? The moisture was gone from the air now, dry, desert-like winds ignoring even the normal ocean humidity to assault them. Valet winced, reluctantly leaning Melia into it like a shield, and managed to throw the two of them for the entrance. Flash! Puddles iced a hole behind them, but it instantly began to melt. She frowned, still looking nauseous. That's not good. Bananas! Valet flopped down on the sticky, dirty floor, panting and nearly hyperventilating. Someone! <sighs> Try to lift that piece of wall back into place! No one was strong enough to sweat streaming from Shinesark's brow and Puddles sending pulse after pulse into maintaining her wall. Come on, Puddles! Valet growled, trying to goad the mare into doing more. Is that seriously the best you can do? Puddles doesn't want to steal cute Valet's show. Yeah, sure you don't. Snarling, Valet pushed herself back upright, grabbing the wall chunk herself. It was annoyingly heavy, even if she had been fresh and healthy, but she tipped it upright anyway, slamming it against a hole. Puddles readjusted her magic, holding it in place, and breathed easier. We can't stay here, Shunspark managed, main plaster to her skull. This isn't working. Yeah, think, Valet growled, looking around at her friends. Grape juice was laying on her back, pupils pinpricked, little chest moving way too hard and way too fast. 
With her tiny body, the heat must have been far harder to handle. Melia was slowly coming out of a daze, and Granada's teeth were gritted as she wobbled on her hooves. We're basically wiped here, Valet padded, moving over and putting a comforting hoof on grape juice. You still want to try to beat every last thing in this place and get all those Varsidelians to a merchant ship? Come on, tell me you're fine with doing what we were doing to those pirates for that. Shinespark looked haunted. The iced-over wall shook, but she ignored it and said, N No, I'm not. But do you think they're going to do anything better to each other if we don't do anything? And what will you do, Valet countered, fanning grape juice with her wings. Just convince them to go and live their lives as model citizens? How are you going to do that? They might think I've got something to do with their goddess, but I definitely don't have a way to command them all to shape up and get them to listen. Either we kill these dudes, or they kill the Marcedellians, or we pull off a miracle and they kill someone else. I saw you with a sword. She pointed an aggressive hoof. Forget how it does something like that. I saw you. I know you're not okay with this. Well, what do you want me to do? Shinespark raised her voice beyond tense. Valet! At this point? Valet matched her tension, though she continued tending to grape juice rather than taking an aggressive stance. I think you should teleport us all out of here and then fly us back to the dream and we acknowledge that the world is garbage and bad stuff happens and go hide and see to ourselves for a while. You want to know what I was doing when I got awakened by my cutie mark with a pirate ready to toss a net over me right on your ship? I was keeping Starlight and Iron Flags company because they're not okay and I'm not okay and we needed it. Bananas, forget the Varsidelians. I want to get out of here while we're still alive. Granada stood shakily facing Shinespark. I... I know. I am sorry for not speaking up more against us coming down here or going on once we found them. Puddles votes run, Puddles groaned from a corner where she was repeatedly icing and thawing herself. You're not Varsidal's hero, Valet sighed, feeling the toll everything had taken on her as well. You don't owe them any crack! The fixed wall segment exploded inward, and Meltdown stepped through in a determined prowl, fans spinning, and a gazelle coiled in her metal tail. She looked ready to attack for an instant before recognizing who was there, turning and blocking the door instead. Ah! Uh, Valet wilted, but threw herself between Meltdown and Grapefruit regardless. Hmm. Meltdown gave the wall hole a sharp look, then lowered the speed on her fan, setting gazelle down on the floor. The Sphinx looked giddy with shock, and a long gash ran down one of its sides all the way through a hind leg right below his cutie mark. Oh, bananas, Valet gave them a wide-eyed look. You two got routed too? Meltdown gave the hallway a final look. We should be leaving. I think Gazelle was distracted by the presence of you all. There will be enough explaining and damage control to do when we get back as is, ignoring the fact that we won't be able to save the Vasadelians. I'm very... Frustrated. Shinespark's ears folded, blood still dripping from the gash on her cheek. What's their status? The Varsidelians. We met up with the advance group, Meltdown nodded, helped them fight their way backwards. Gazelle heard himself rushing ahead. We pushed back down the main corridor, their reinforcements were coming through. It should be enough for them to fall back to the prison room where they can try to hold, but they won't be pushing again and will eventually be overwhelmed. I tried to bring down the Cerusians' morale earlier, but it hasn't worked. So you're leaving, Shinespark drooped. Even with whatever you can do, you think it's a good idea to leave too? Meltdown turned. As I said, I'm very frustrated we haven't anything to show for our numerous setbacks. She surveyed the group, one by one, noting their exhaustion and incapacitation, eyes finally settling on puddles. It would make things a lot better if I had at least one thing to call this trip worthwhile for. Puddles grinned nervously. Why are you looking at cute Puddles like that? I'm not talking to Puddles, Meltdown said, stepping away from Gazelle and toward Puddles. I'm talking to you, Windigo. I'm not sure you're smart enough to realize how dangerous you are. In the name of the Empire, you can't be free and running around. Her fans started to speed up. Vully gulped. Heh, oh well. Puddles tossed her mane with a hoof, pupilless eye suddenly sparking. Looks like it's time to see how well all that acting paid off. 
With a roar, Meltdown's fan suddenly reversed, blowing backwards and propelling her toward Puddles with a rocket-like hoof outstretched. Puddles countered with a double hoof smash to the ground, icy runes erupting in circles around her, and Vos turned to pillars, rising like geysers and smashing through the roof before a larger one took her with it. Ha 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 Puddles cackled, lifting herself away and out of Meltdown's reach. Push! A blast of fiery air washed in all directions as Meltdown reared back, coiling her hind legs and jumping into the shower of debris. Her spiked metal hooves lashed onto the pillars, and she rose with puddles out of sight. <coughs> Valet threw herself over grape juice and winced as splinters of wood peppered her body. Further away, Scheinfuck lowered her head and stood over Melia. Gwenana managed to duck out of the way altogether. Everyone? She pointed her hoof back at the hole in the wall where more overheated pirates were starting to collapse and spill in. We have company! Sparky! Valet reached downward with her wings, grabbing grape juice and holding her against her belly, not having time to properly pick up the mare. Fly us out! All of us! Now! This is about to go from bad to worse faster than you can blink! Instantly, blue magic surrounded her. Even him? Shinesburg threw a scared glance at Gazelle, who was starting to pull himself to his paws, tongue lolling and side dripping blood. Who cares, Valet growled. He'll make trouble for us either way. Dream, now! With another pulse of magic, they started to rise, soaring upward for the hole Puddles had made, all their friends in tow. End of chapter 525